Renee here with Science Loves Art and 4th Street Studios. We have recently repackaged our paint pour kit, so I wanted to create an updated video for you all. Um, basically the paint recipe is the same, although we have doubled the amount you get with each kit. Um, and the supplies are pretty much the same, but now we've increased the number of pieces to 10. Um, and that doesn't include the backside that you can also create. So we love these discs. These are um, perfect for coasters. So we provide different shapes and sizes in your kit. They're all a little different. The bigger circles, the smaller ones, and then we have provide some with holes in them because how fun would that be to make little jewelry or pendants or keychains? So let's unpack the kit. New improved version. So Science Loves Art is a nonprofit um, I am the founder, I'm an artist, and I love to create art projects and explore new techniques. So this isn't really anything, I'm not a painter, I'm basically a sculpture and metalsmith artist, but I love this project. If you order online, they just come in these packaged boxes. Science loves art. There's a tin that can be your working area if you like. For today, I'm going to use cardboard and foil just because I need a larger workspace, but that's what we included that for. You will have your four paint colors already mixed and ready to go with an easy squeeze top. Our other packaging were beautiful glass bottles, but the paint was getting clogged, so we've got a new design. You will have 10 pieces of fun shapes and sizes to create your paint pour design. Um, color wheel that we've created that'll help you mix your colors. A sticker, some popsicle sticks for stirring. Okay, and you will receive cups for drying your work. You lay it on top. Cups for mixing, magnets, and of course your cute little science beaker. I am going to use all of these materials today, but I'm going to use the studio version because I don't want to use some of our pretty new stuff. Okay, so here's a few things that I created yesterday. They're dry now. So once your work finishes, it won't be as glossy as it was, but it's really fun to put resin or some kind of uh, lacquer or polyurethane or a sealer on top. So you can grab that anywhere, just depending on what you want. All right, so today I am gonna show you how to Let's, let's work, let's create something on our palette. All right, so we're gonna start with our beaker. First, we're gonna put a base color down. This helps the movement. So we'll talk fluid dynamics. See that there's always texture on these materials that is dry and your paint won't move as, as much. So it's kind of fun to put down a base color. I'm gonna use white, but you could use any color. Maybe I'll do a little bit of just a little red over here. Just have fun with it. You're gonna have so many, so much paint. Um, and this is, you know, special paint, so it's not for regular painting. Uh, of course, it's acrylic, so you could just paint with it. Use your popsicle stick and just smooth it out. This is going to create some movement. Okay, so I've got my wet paint ready to go, and I am going to add to my beaker white. And it doesn't have to be technical. Just think about the colors that you want. Um, your kit includes primary colors, yellow, blue, red, and white. So you have all the options in the world to create your own paint um, So, and your own colors. So you can use your little clear mixing cups that come in your kit to mix your own colors, or just let the paint pour do the mixing for you, which is what I'm gonna show you today. So I'm going to put in some red. Now I'll put some yellow next to the red. That would make some type of orange combination. And maybe I'll add some green here next to the yellow. That would make some green. Add some white. 
to create lighter colors. So I'm just using a little bit of everything and I'm going to end with white. Okay, I'm not mixing it, I'm not stirring it. Um, and for this demonstration, I think that I will do one of my favorite techniques, which is just pouring the paint on. I'll try to do this so you can see. I'm going to just go in a circle here. Slowly let the paints layer through. We've got some greens. I forgot to put my foil down, but I do like to use foil because it once the paint dries, you can reuse it. Now look how pretty that is. So pretty, it looks like candy. All right. So pretty. You just can't go wrong with this. Let me get my foil. So you can use foil or wax paper or regular paper as your background. Um, it's fun to use something that collects the paint. Um, you've got your tin, your foil tin, which is fine too. Um, because once whatever drips, you can grab a rock and roll in there. You can use some of your other smaller pieces. All right, now we're letting our paint is just relaxing here a little. I'm going to start moving it just a little bit. Let's just see what shapes and designs start appealing to us. I mean, I just love it like this. It looks like striped taffy candy. Some people really like cells. They like to see lots of big circles. Um, I personally love how the colors mix just a little bit and you've got this subtle abstract almost it's like you've created a painting on accident that's gorgeous but it's not on accident it's all because of science and art working together all right i'm going to go a little bit this way i love these up here I love that too. I'm just going to let this, I'm going to get another piece. This is one I've already created something on that side. We'll just create more. These make great little ornaments. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's just let it drip. Hopefully there's not too much glare on this. Look how beautiful. So what I like to see, you are getting some circles coming up, little white in colors, and it'll change as it dries. Um, but another thing that's really fun about this is the colors. Look, we didn't, we created some greens and pinks and light blues and different shades of green without mixing them and making our own colors. These are just from primary colors. So this is some of the color theory involved with this kit. And you'll see some little dots and circles and lines. How fun is that? It looks like a map. And get one of your paper cups and set that on top so that your piece can dry without sticking. Okay, I'm going to show you a different technique. Here's another piece I did yesterday. It's dried. And I'm going to create something in the back. So I think for my base color, we will make, have some yellow. Yellow. Although I love, I love white because it does so many different things. Um, you have an equal amount of white in these other colors. So as a base, it's kind of fun to just add different colors. You can do whatever you want. That's the great thing. This is about exploring so many possibilities. That's the fun thing about science and art and 
our whole concept is discover, you know, explore and learn about science and art by exploring and discovering yourself, not someone teaching you how to do something. Okay, we've got our base color. So let's fill up our little beaker. I didn't even wash it out. I'm just going to keep adding. So we'll add white and red and blue and white, just a tad of white and a tad of yellow, a little bit more red. And you're not going to stir this in the beaker. Just let it layer, layer, layer. You'll see it just stays separated. All right. Now this time I am going to turn it over. Let my beaker sit on top of that. And then I'm just going to pick it up and see what happens. Ready? Oh. Oh, yeah, that is really nice. Really pretty little white outlines. You know, I put in white at the beginning and ending, but it doesn't overwhelm it. Okay, now you know we've got that piece, so I'll put this down. Okay, look how pretty so far. Just gonna slowly move it. Look at all these beautiful oranges right here. I'm gonna move it real slow because I don't want to cover that up. I'm trying to get the paint to move without it covering that up. So be patient with the moving. See the little circles coming up? over here and over there. Other colors are coming up through the top layer. That's the fluid dynamics. Have you ever seen clouds in the sky that move? That's fluid dynamics. Okay, let's just keep going. A little bit more. Look at this pretty greens and blues over here. I'm just going to pull it to the end here because I really love that. Now let's go this other way. Let's go this way a little bit. Pulling this back now. Everybody has their own style. You, I love when people come to the studio or send us videos or pictures of what they did. Um, I mean, you can just, there's so many ways. Some people get their stick and just kind of draw. How fun, huh? I just love these purples. So, you know, I put the red next to the blue and we've got these purples and then white, which brings a little bit in. Whoa, I just love that. Should we stop? It's hard to stop. So you just want to keep going and going and going. Beautiful. All right. All right, I'm just going to leave it. I love that. So we'll just keep watching that. Get a close up when we're done. Here we go. I'm going to put white. What color should we do this time? Let's see. I just like changing it up. I can't decide. I love all the colors. So we're going to do a little bit of purple. We'll put the yellow next to the blue. What color does that make? Green. We'll put the white next to that to see if we can get some lighter greens. 
just a tad of red, a tad of blue, and we'll end with white. Okay. Now, I filled my beaker up, and this isn't a very large piece, so I'm going to move to this larger piece. So let me put down a base color. So we have all these supplies. If you have the kit and you need more supplies, um, just go to our shop or Etsy and we've got um, our website for Fourth Street Studios or Science Loves Art and we have the restock paint materials and whatever you need. Now I think I will try something new for you guys. Let's do one that's more zigzaggy. I'm just going to turn that over right there. Kind of do two at once here, huh? This is fun to do as a whole family um, or group or party. So look, we've got even more little white dots coming up. This is the one we just did. I just wanted to show you that. I'll keep watching. Okay, we're going to let that one sit a second. And this one, we are going to start moving around ever so gently. Look how cool. I might just let this one lean a little bit more than I did the other ones. I'm just going to let it lean on one side. really pulling. If you're doing the back side of one, you'll have to be careful and not make mess it up. Wow. Whoops. Very pretty shapes and colors. All right. I've got my foils kind of a mess, so my, uh, I could turn it over, or I could fold it in half, and once it dries, you can just reuse it. See, this is one I used yesterday, and it's fine. So, you may not want to use your little uh, foil pan that comes with your kit. You might just want to use that for storage, but it's up to you. That's what it's for. All right, we're going to try something different. Okay, let's put our base coat down. A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. And I, where we live in Wyoming, we have a greenhouse out back that was built in 1926. Um, I live on the property near downtown Laramie, and we also have an this is my working studio and also the studio of Science Loves Art and Fourth Street Studios. I create my own artwork here. But we do have workshops and things like that. And because we've been doing so many kits over the last, since about 2016, and that's gotten really popular and we've enjoyed making even more kits, bookmaking, and those are some of my other designs. And we, soon we will be doing metal and we're doing glass fusing kits now. I'm um, trying to get rid of this so we can have, not have the shadow. Um, but anyway, check out what we have and let us know if you have a special request. We're kind of all over the place, but we'll be doing some garden and concrete and succulent art soon. Okay. Just okay, straight bottom. I think I will layer my, layer this. And let's fill it up. Let's see. Let's do 
red, make some purples this time. Just a tad bit of yellow, maybe that'll make some green. End it with white. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my funnel in right here and pour this in. You may not be able to see what's happening, but it is pretty cool. Just another way of letting the colors kind of mix with each other. There we go. All right. Look at that. That's kind of cool. A little bit different kind of feathering right there. I think there's a lot of potential and fun with that thing. Also, get a straw. If you have a straw, you could blow these out to the edges instead of leaning your piece. Actually, this summer I made a huge 10 foot by 10 foot, I poured on plastic as a storefront window display and I used a hair dryer to move the paint around and it worked really cool. Look, it's different. Very beautiful. I do like the feathery look, and the layers. Beautiful. Wow. So many rich colors. And I love this right here. I don't really want to. You just kind of get your finger and Pull it to the side. Ooh. Now there's some yellows up here if I pulled it down more, but gosh, I love that too. Turquoise blues up here. Little lines of purple. little dots coming up here. See, I love this subtleness of just the colors slightly been blending. Got some burgundies over here, deep colors, light blue line, deep blue line. All right, I'm gonna zoom in on this. Just a little bit. You can see the little dots coming up. Looks very beautiful, like a galaxy or something. I've got this little tube. I'm just gonna try blowing on it and see what happens. Whoops. It's kind of cool. Kind of blends the colors a little bit too much though. I think you have to be careful. Kind of interesting.